Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, and in this video, B Mode Part 2, we're going to talk about Magic Templar, a lot more emphasis on training, how to be that annoying rock humper using Misform to survive, meanwhile, still providing a lot of damage and group utility. So, if you're looking into the training aspect, not just kind of cool little highlights, this is the video for you. Let's get started, B Mode Part 2. Okay, I think the easiest way to explain this build, the premise behind it, and how to play it and operate is it's really based on being independent of anyone else for healing, surviving, and damage. You know, I've been playing a lot more solo in very small groups, you know, two to four, sometimes six, maybe even eight, but no more than that usually. And there's something to be said for those solos players that can play on their own, survive, kill people, and still survive. And that's what the most important thing is. I think if you get a couple of people that can survive independently of others, you get them together in a group, you can have something truly special. And so that's kind of what B set this character up for. Her and Ernie playing together, being independent of each other, but still adding a little bit of utility. So with that being said, I think in PvP, I have a lot to learn still, I'm no pro, but surviving is the most important thing if you can't survive you're going to kill one guy you're going to get zerg down and die you have to understand how to survive how to escape how to heal yourself how to help friends how do synergies work etc so on so on so on so we're going to explain survivability here first and rothgar is going to beat on some crap and just show you the basics behind it then i'm going to show you a clip on uh, how to survive when you're getting chased by 15 people, 10 people, or whatever, and they're zerging you down. Walking around looking like this in Sierra Del with Delta in a thousand CP, a lot of people try to kill me. So I have gotten decent at avoiding the zerging that goes on to, against me. Basic premise of this idea and this build is one bar here is for defensive. And this is on your seducer, so you get a lot of benefit to blocking with sword and shield, damage reduction. Deltia, why don't you wear heavy armor? Well, the reason I don't wear heavy armor is there's no benefit in heavy armor anymore for block cost reduction or block mitigation. In previous uh, games, previous builds, it was basically you had a five-piece block reduction right here. Instead, it has weapon and spell damage, which is great for more offensive build. But right now, in this game, you get all of your block cost reduction and damage reduction right here in these two passes, sword and board. So that's what happens with this build. If I'm killing stuff, I'm getting corpses back in repentance, I have basically infinite stamina to continue blocking. In a one-on-one -on -one scenario, though, it's not exactly that easy. But just keep in mind that heavy armor doesn't give you any more of this. Yes, it gives you mitigation. Yes, it gives you healing and receive, a little bit more damage, uh, and, and so on and so forth. But really, sword and board's where it's at for survivability. So survivability on sword and board, damage on dual wield. Why dual wield? Well, if you don't know, you go to dual wield here, trim blade and blunt. Swords give you increased damage done. That's a flat amount. And it gives you a lot more spell power. Don't know how, don't ask me. Someone else in the comments will know. So if you look here, 2100, 2600. So the idea is all offensive damage here, all defense, lock and block right here. So the most important things you can have is surviving is on your back bar. Two buffs that you want to maintain pretty much as best as you possibly can. In ideal scenarios, you're going to have these up before you charge into battle. You're going to recast them once the durations fall off. If you can look at my little add-on here called Buff Timers, it kind of shows you the windows of where these are. So number one, the top buff is Major Mending. It keeps refreshing since I'm in my focus. I have Channel Focus down here. Actually, I use Restoring Focus. And then I have the Ritual right here, Extended Ritual. Remember about rituals, you can step in and out of them and still kind of get the benefit. Though oftentimes when you're getting chased, you're going to have to recast them. So the most important out of the two, in my opinion, is Extended Ritual. Why? It comes as five harmful effects. People see me, they're going to want to apply poisons, poison injections, reverberating bash, all sorts of debuffs that affect your healing, your, your stamina, your magicka, and this one easy cast, five effects are gone. That is incredibly powerful. Not to mention the group synergy is an instant big time heal, especially with major mending up as well. So I love, love this ability because it also gives major mending as well by putting it down. Now, the other one does more damage to the morph, but I still like this five purgeable effects now, especially since a lot of people target me. Remember that once you exit the radius of this 12 meter radius, you're still gonna get a few seconds where you can get major mending. So it's not just 
one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one. Now it starts the four seconds. So if you cast it and literally just keep on moving, you have about six seconds of major mending. So you'll see me in a lot of my videos where I'm casting it and I kind of run again and I cast it. I'm doing a couple different things. I'm resetting the buff, I'm removing cleanses, and I'm getting ready to charge back in. Part of this is timing your burst. You know, doing 10 seconds of offense, maybe 15, 20 seconds where you're just kind of kiting around surviving. Next up is restoring focus, which seems like an odd morph. Since I changed this guy to a high elf here, I really don't have a problem with magic. Now you'll see sometimes running out of magic, that might be after a five minute fight or so. But with potions, with synergies, because remember, Undaunted gives you resources back when you use synergies. Obviously, playing solo, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities to get these, but even with one person in your group, 1,500 magic back is a lot. Also, I use Honor of the Dead, which is a weird type of morph, but it gives me a lot of the magic cost back over 8 seconds. Show you a trick with that in just a little bit. So the extra damage reduction, extra healing receive, makes it a worthy morph for me. Now, it seems odd. Try them both. You like a lot of magic? Pick channel focus. You're getting targeted and focused a lot because you have a big target on your back? Try restoring focus. Same thing with extended ritual. Ritual ret, great for AoE, not so great for cleansing pure dot effects. The bread and butter of our escaping, eluding, and surviving is misform. So you gotta really understand what this does. You get major expedition, which is critical, just the movement speed. Also removes and grants you immunity to CC and mobilization but you cannot be healed and your magic recovery is disabled. Okay, so what this means is you're rooted by a Dragonite using Talons, Misform. What this means is you got Caltrops on you, Misform, and you can get out of it. This is your bread and butter for surviving. However, it comes with a cost. You can't heal yourself, and guess what? You cannot gain magic back, so you're going to have to play this very, very wisely. A trick combination with Mistform you can use is also Channel Focus. The other morph will give you back magic even though you're in Mistform. Another way to get back magic is Honor the Dead. If you cast this when you're below 75% or someone else, you can get back magic while you're in Mistform. So when you come back out, you still have a little bit left to keep going in the fight. And that's what's most important. Another thing is I have my stun back here, Blazing Spear, which I'm going to show you in a little bit how to use. It's somewhat tricky. Great synergy, stuns one target, great AoE, and it's range. Another reason to have it on your back bar is increased critical strike damage. Now it says damage, but that actually means that you can get the benefit from healing as well. So 10% more on a crit heal is really important for me. So that's why I have at least one Adric Spear ability slotted on my back and my front bar. I have the Vampire Ultimate Devouring Swarms for that inevitable Zerg that's really outnumbering me 2 to 3 to 1 or someone else in my group. So what I do is I hit this and remember that when an ability does damage, it's calculated based on the bar that you're on. So you could be on your low spell damage bar here, cast bats and bar swap, and then the rest of the ticks on bats are going to get the benefit from being on your dual ult bar. So the whole idea here is you're kind of kiting, surviving, you refresh your buffs, you get a bunch of people on you, you hit a movable pot, bats, swap. And then you kind of go into sweep spam mode. As soon as someone gets low, you laser beam them and kill them. That's why I use bats. Now it's really, really good for single play. If you're in a group, you know, there's some benefit to running Remembrance here damage mitigation, but the problem is it's not mobile. So I really like to have everyone in my group run a mobile ultimate and then a non-mobile ultimate. And what I mean by that is something that if we're clustered up around a corner in a tight cramped space that you can provide. Nova is a great example of that. Mage's Guild and Meteor Shooting Stars, another great example of that. Mobile ultimate bats, Mage's Guild, or excuse me, Fighter's Guild, Dawnbreaker of Smiting for when they're clumped up and we need burst. That's really, really key. So just to keep in mind your back bar, Mistform is your escape. You got a really simple heal here. And when in doubt, if you're out of stamina, just click on to the dead. You could sit there and just run around and click on to the dead and survive. It, it's really cheesy, but it works. You got your two buffs you're going to want to cast prior to jumping into the fight. 
and then after you're jumping into the fight. Don't be afraid to continually cast Extended Ritual. As people keep shooting crap at you, you're going to have debuffs. And if you look right to the left of my character, right where my, my head is about now, that's where the debuffs show up on my character screen. You can actually physically see them on your character, and you're going to get used to what's really important. Reverberating Bash, the Green Poison, Poison Injection, those really awful ones that you're going to want to cleanse right away. Siege, Fire Ballista, Cold Fire... Cleanse is so important. It's so important. So I almost rather, after taking a lot of damage and getting stunned, the first thing I do, cleanse. Get Major Mending down, block, heal. Cleanse again. Put my rune down, heal. Remember, you're mitigating tons of damage blocking, so it's almost better to block, cleanse, heal, in that order. Okay, so my offensive rotation on my dual wield bar is I usually start out in sword and board and throw a spear first. And I'm going to show you how to time this in just a second. And then I have toppling charge, gap closer, bugs out probably 90% of the time, but still, at 10% it works, it's great. I have generation, which seems like an odd morph. And the reason why, it doesn't make sense for me to have tons of health on one bar and then not so much health on the other. Also, I do light attack weave in between with my gear to kind of proc some uh, weapon damage and spell damage here. Do 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 with this. So, 348 spell damage for 5 seconds right before I do my ultimate. Very, very useful. Also, my primary target gets debuffed significantly as well. So, don't just sit there and spam puncturing sweeps. You really need a light attack in between it. It's very, very useful. Very, very effective. So that light attack once in a while will give me a lot of health back. I like it because I get targeted a lot. Next up, Repentance. Very, very good for solo play, getting the corpses, especially if you have someone running Engine Guardian or if you're just killing a lot of people. The goal of this small group or solo PvP is kill, repent, get out. Kill, repent, get out. If you can keep doing those things, you know, 1v20 people, you're not going to sit in there in sweeps and kill them all. There's no point in doing that. Try to pick out the onesies and twosies while you're blocking and, and being offensive, CC breaking, dodge rolling, repent, get out, recover, do the same thing over again. Puncturing sweeps, it's simple AOE, single target, procs burning light. It's very, very hard and also heals you for the amount of damage done. The thing I don't think people understand about puncturing sweeps is its radius, and that's what really separates good from great players. So let's say in Dragon Star Arena, I can tell new Templars from when they're on the very last boss highest, and they're doing this. They're literally on top of the boss. Look at that animation, yeah. And they're puncturing sweep it. This is eight meter range. There's no reason to be that close. You can sit here and do this and still hit the boss. Why does that matter? Because AOE, cleave, single target abilities. You, you want to be close enough to light weave with your light attack here to proc your weapon enchant damage, but you don't know to be pillar humping, okay? And remember that the cleave, the, the radius in the spear, if you look at the spear from top side up, basically the eight meters is a little bit past the edge of the spear visually. Why am I telling you this? Because remember, it heals you for the amount of damage done. So if you have two targets and, and your spear and you're doing this, when you could be doing this and hitting both, you're essentially healing yourself for less. The objective is to do as much damage as possible and heal yourself as much as possible so you don't have to spend time healing. If you can do damage and heal yourself, that's more optimal than sitting there just you know jabbing one target. It sounds very, very simple, but it took me a very, very long time to learn this. Constantly look for angles. Constantly try to be one to two meters away so you can get the optimum amount of targets. Because more healing equals more damage done for you, more bodies, more repentances, more cool videos. Radiant Glory, or Jesus Beam, I like to call it Laser Beam. Very, very effective, almost too effective. 28 meter range, but that gets buffed. If you have the Alliance War maxed out, you're near a keep, resource, etc. The proper way to use this, don't be the guy that sits there and laser beams from 100% health. No one likes that guy. I don't like that guy. I've done it before because it's just kind of funny to watch someone die to clicking one button. But really, you want to be laser beaming your primary target. What we try to do is time our burst and then focus one target down. So whoever I'm beaming, the other DPS will go to it. Essentially, if I'm beaming around 50 to 40% health, as soon as their health dips, boom, they're vaporized and I'm getting the killing blow. 
You always want to be the guy or gal seeking out the killing blow, and then really it's combat frenzy. The high idea is killing a single target and getting ultimate back. Using Dawnbreaker or Smiting as a primary stun, knockdown, allowing you to jab sweeps, killing more targets. And repentancing, so you can do that much needed blocking. Kind of doing this rotation over and over. Charging in, bursting, repenting, Dawnbreakering, bursting, repenting, laser beaming as a low health target. That's kind of how you do it. Dawnbreaker is smiling. It is physical based. Yes, I know people, that's great. It still hits very, very hard. A lot of stamina builds still run Shooting Star. It's magic based, but still scales off of whatever is highest. So if you don't know that, that's what it is. It scales off your max stats, whatever is highest. So even a physical damage ultimate can still hit very, very hard. In fact, I've hit people for 12K a player for that heart with this ability. You wanna try your best to empower this right before by using degeneration. It's not always gonna work out like that, but and ideally you wanna top lane charge, light attack to proc your weapon damage, enchant here, spell damage and weapon damage, your crusher, degeneration, smack them with the dawn breaker into sweeps, laser beam when they get down. That seems like a lot going on, but once you practice it and get better and better at it, it'll become very easy. It'll be natural for you to go in. It'll be toppling, light attack, degeneration, smack them with the dawn breaker, sweeps, low health. Seems like a lot, but everything comes better with practice. So for instance, this would be something that you'd kind of see me do. I start on my back bar because I always want to get my buffs down to make myself a little tankier. I also like to use immovability potions prior to an engagement to get that 15, uh, almost 16 seconds of immunity to CC. That let me capitalize on my offense. Because if you don't, the very first thing that's going to happen, you're going to topple and charge in there, get stunned. So you really need to focus on timing, bursting within that 16 second window. So I put these down. I'm usually generally holding block. And now if you watch, I'll do a blazing spear immediately bar swap toppling charge. Now watch how effective this is. Bang. So what happens is my toppling charge lands almost exactly the same time my blazing spear does. That actually, surprisingly or not, is enough to kill some players because they're usually not blocking, they don't know what's going on, and if you time it just right, bang. Or they're in the 50% health range to laser beam. So your goal is buffs, spear, and watch how fast I bar swap. See that? I mean, it, it's not cheating or hacking or anything, it's just practice. Practice, practice, practice. Bar swap. And so when that spear lands, it's on my dual wield bar, not my not my other bar. So that means it's going to benefit from a lot more damage. So if we just throw it on an NPC here, and we don't swap, that was 4.1k non-crit. So we throw it here and bar swap, 5.2. You see how much harder that hits? Do the math. That's a lot. I can't math. 20%? Is that right, kids? Did I get it? 20%? Okay, anyways. Put my buffs down, spear, bar swap, toppling charge, light attack in between there, entropy, bang, smack him with the dawn breaker. So let's try it again, some little health here. So I throw a spear, potion, toppling charge, light attack, smack, bang, laser beam. Seems like a lot. Remember that immovability, those circles around my feet, that's going to give you time to capitalize on the offense. Once you go into that, what do you do? So essentially, you're going to have about 5 to 10 seconds of offense after everything happens. Usually, more people are going to show up, whether it's for your side or another side. Reevaluate. There's no problem with pulling out. Constantly, like in the military, what I was taught is always think of the next place you need to go to bound to, to bound to safety. So if I'm attacking, I see an AD horde pulling up there. What do I do? Recast my buffs. I get in mist form, and I'm annoying rock humper guy. Yep, I'm that, that idiot that no one wants to chase, no one wants to fight because I just do this a lot and try to find these little cliffs to jump on and, and limit myself from getting hit, line of sight. If you can't see me, you can't hit me. It's as simple as that. It takes a lot of practice. Remember guys, I went from zerging all day with 24 people to playing solo in, in a small group. And I tell you, it, they're both fun ways to play the game. And God bless you, play whatever way you like, really, it, it matters. But when you're independent and you're solo, you'll probably die a lot more learning, uh, learning about these things, but it'll make you a lot better player. Because if you're solo and you can handle five people beating on you, imagine when five of your friends are together that have that same potential. You can devastate the map. And it really takes a lot of time 
and getting your face kicked in doing it. I'm sure there's plenty of Delta Exposed videos out there to show me learning and getting sniped and, and beat the crap out of. But you just got to keep going at it. No one learns day one. Okay? Okay, so the gear, it's pretty simple, somewhat costly, but at least a lot of it's craftable here. What you're going to need, you got seven pieces here, you got three and then two. So you're going to use double uh, double melee, meaning you're not going to have a whole lot of effective range abilities besides laser beam, which you shouldn't be using either. There's a lot of risk, there's a lot of reward with that, but you can switch it up however you like. First important thing is you're going to have Kagernax on your offensive, so when you switch, you get the full benefit of it. See, so you want to be rezzing or doing all your damage on dual wield. So three pieces on the body and then three pieces on seducer. So when you switch, you have the seducer for your heavy cost magic abilities. Now, traits uh, and enchants. I'm a high elf and really you're trying to get about 16k stamina. And then in Cyrodiil, you're about 24k unbuffed health and almost 38k magicka with this setup. I really highly recommend at least five pieces of impenetrable. If you're running someone with transmutation, that becomes a little bit flexible, but you really got to have five. Now, I would highly recommend even six for a newer player, but since I block a lot, getting focused, I go with the sturdy trait for two plus my shield. On your heavy slash large pieces, you're going to want prismatic enchants. Now, these are expensive. You can get them in Imperial City, but they make a heck of a well-rounded character. So you can see you get more bang for your buck. So on a large piece such as my shield, I almost have a thousand health, but here I got 400, 400, and 400, and plus some. So it's a really good investment if you're going to commit to a build. Now you're going to have one piece here, Molag Kena. It could be your shoulder or your helm. Really, you're just trying to get the, the spell damage from this piece. So that's not too hard to get nowadays with the undaunted pledges and keys. Sometimes you can buy it in Cyrodiil. So this gear is really simple. The jewelry's willpower, all spell damage. Now, if you're getting used and familiar with this build, you're probably going to have trouble with resources, so I'd recommend at least one magic recovery until you get familiar with how the build works and resource management, using potions timely, and kind of when and when not to heal. On my sword, I do magic damage and restore stamina. Seems really ridiculous, but doing a big old heavy attack when I have nothing left allows me to block, allows me to get more magic generation, mist form out, and survive. So you don't have to necessarily enchant this. I rarely use it. But B recommends the power trait, which is very, very effective for healing. And the reason why? Battle Spirit. It doesn't negate Battle Spirit per se, but you're looking at, you know, a little bit more crit chance or just pure healing. Sometimes you can get massive, massive honor of the deads and get some resources back. Also on here, really you need to enchant these these two weapons. Weapon damage and spell damage, and then crushing. Crushing adds a lot of damage, and so does this sucker. So that's kind of how we get to these critical numbers. Deltia, I have the exact same gear as you. Why am I not at those numbers? Really, it's champion points. Remember that each point you put into a tree gives you more stats in that area. Yes, try it. It works. So if you have 400 champion points into stamina, my exact same gear, all legendary with kudos, you're not going to be the same because you're champion points. So this is a simple gear setup, and it's really good. It doesn't take you a whole long longer to get it, and it really is effective. I'm trying something different out in the future. Um, Cyrodiil's light build with something else, and I'm going to try something maybe... <laughs> maybe freakishly powerful in the future. So I still have to do a lot of testing, but the nice thing about what B, B and Ernie came up with gear-wise, it's, it's available for everyone, and once you get it and get it maxed out, no more sitting around doing dungeons if you want to PvP. It comes down to getting better, working at the build, and, and learning it, and trying to figure out how to maximize your play style, not gear. That's what I love so much about it. Now I'm going to talk to you about champion points real quick, and then we're going to get to the best part of the video, which I, uh, I think is the best part of the video, and that's combat, and giving you about a five-minute clip on how to survive. It's not going to cover every single little detailed tip I have, but it covers a lot of them, gives you an idea of what I'm thinking about. Okay, champion points real quick. This is with a 531 setup that you guys will be seeing on consoles here shortly. 60 points into Magician. Um, that's about all I need that I found effective. 
77 to Arcanus. I don't do any into Mooncalf now because I'm trying to get corpses back. Most of the time I'm blocking, so that's going to be negated anyways. 20 points into uh, Shadow Ward along with my reduced block cost Sturdy and Sword and Board. Uh, tumbling, break free, 20 points. That's, that's a lot, but I'm getting CC'd almost every 6-7 seconds, so I really need that. Now here's some room where you have to kind of make your own build. Since I do a little more off healing, I like a little bit more in Blessed. Now B's build focuses more on puncturing sweeps, so she puts a lot more points in a Thaumaturge. I recommend you play with it and see what's effective for you. Coming over here, 20 points into resistance is really nice, gets you that a little bit more because it's percentage based, it's not a static amount, so 8% can really add up. And then these two things, Hardy, Elemental Defender, and Thick Skin, a lot of damage over time effects, so don't forget sprinkling some points into here. And then I don't do any into Quick Recovery since I have some other ways to get uh, health back and I can just get that minor vitality bonus e anyways. I'd rather for PvP have more in Resistance than I would in a Quick Recovery. So the very first thing we're trying to do is bomb this group of three to four and then we're gonna pull back when we get dunked on. So we're trying to kill them, they meteor me and I block dodge roll out. So we're trying to see if we can't get one or two people, get repentances on, so I'm just holding block at this point. Okay, now we're getting overwhelmed, someone dies. What happened? At this point, there's no point in fighting them face to face, toe to toe. They're just pulling out of the keep and they're gonna overwhelm us. So I'm looking at one of four things. Very first thing I'm looking at is my buffs. So I look at my buffs to can kind of see what I have to recast in order to accept Escape and survive. Number two, I'm looking at my debuffs. So I'm dark flared, I got a rogue splash on me. Dark flare is going to reduce my healing, so that's a big priority to deal with. Number three, I'm looking for a potion. Why? Because I know I can get some speed and movability or even vanish if I need to get out. Number four, I'm looking at positions on the map. So I'm looking, is the keep flag? Is uh, Issa, my last remaining partner, with me? How much uh, health do they have in the top left corner? Do they need a spear? I'm kind of thinking myself, what do I need to do next? Lastly, I'm moving to this rock to try to get a line of sight while I'm thinking about all these things. In between thinking of all these things, do things. Use your cleanse, put your ritual down, and get ready for the next phase. Okay, now I'm gonna have a lot of people beating the crap out of me. You can see them debuffs starting to pile up. I'm getting stunned. I don't have a potion. What do I do to survive? I missed for him. You can see I take advantage of it in line of sight. I do a cleanse here, get away. So during the middle of this process, I receive a low stamina notification. That's one due to blocking and getting CC a lot. So what my attention shifts to is how to get stamina back. Because on this build, around 5,000 stamina is the threshold where I can no longer break CC and I'm probably going to die. So what I focus my attention on is staying in mist form for 4 seconds. Why? That gives me 2 ticks of stamina recovery, which is roughly around 1,000 to 2,000 depending on the buffs that are going on and out. I'm also looking at number 2, which is my potion. I know if I get a tripod or an immovable potion, that's about 16 seconds where I don't have to worry about break free. So I'm buying time till one of those things happen. I get enough stam at 5,000, stop blocking. You're going to get CC most likely right away. That's what you're going to use to capitalize, either get out of there or go on offense. Finally, the third priority is my buffs. It's going to be really hard to cast something because I just need to stay in misform or I'm probably dead. So I grab their attention away and I become the annoying Templar rock climber. And that allows me to get away and get a res on my friend while Issa, sorry buddy, you die. Now, the goal is just to survive. If we can survive, kind of kite them around, res my friends, get a forward camp down and eliminate targets here and there, we can take out this entire group. So I got their attention back, I throw a spear for my buddy and I cleanse. I'm kind of line of sighting around here leading him. He should be on low on resources, but I can just keep honor the dead up and just heal him indefinitely. Because once we get back to our friends, we get a res, we got three people to go bang these guys out. So I stand right in front of him so he cannot bash and stop the res. We got everyone up. Now we're going to bat bomb and push back with Dawnbreakers and see if we can't get three kills real early. There's one. I'm going to laser beam the low health target that Issa's on. I'm going to break free and line of sight. You can see they're just targeting me. That's okay. That lets my offense do what they do, kill stuff. So I line of sight, come back. They're putting no pressure on me. They just forgot about me. So what am I doing? Healing my buddies, throwing them spears, surviving. 
One person sees me, so I entropy up. I'm gonna topple him, get rid of the dark flare. Now he just kind of breaks free. So he sees me, I have enough stamina to survive. So I'm working on cleanses, throwing spears, so we can survive and fight another day. I line of sight him, and he kind of pugs out and goes after me, which allows my other people to take care of the other bat group, essentially wiping them, and then it's an easy three on one. This is the process you need to constantly be thinking about. Line of sighting, timing your bursts, looking at potions, looking at cooldowns, looking at what you need to cast and why. seem like it's brief but really there, there's just so many things i could tell you and give you tips it just could do an entire infinite video series on it as i learn more and more things remember that the purpose of these videos isn't to show how great i am because i'm not that great there's a lot of players that are way better than me b big ernie my friends isa i mean these players are just legendarily good i'm just now trying to start learning some of the tips in pvp and the reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm sharing this, number one, I'm not afraid of sharing my build because I don't care if you use it. I'm gonna try to get better at it than you are. Number two is I don't want you guys to struggle as much as I did trying to learn this stuff. Learn it the hard way. Going out and playing solo and getting ganked and smashed in the face over and over and just saying, why would I ever come back to Cyrodiil? No one likes that experience. So hopefully this will give you some insights, whether it's a Templar or something else where you can kind of go back and, and tool with it and do your own thing and survive and have fun. Remember, if our builds are all static and we have the exact same thing running around Cyrodiil, this game will never advance. The PvP will never get better. Players won't get better. and It'll be static. I don't want to see that. Thus, I will always share my builds. I'm going to do part three later, which is dueling. Yes, dueling, I know. And also a uh, small group offense, showing you how to time burst in a situation where you're getting hit, you're getting dark flared, you're getting CC'd. So there will be a part three, offense. This is really just the gear, setup skills, and defense. Hope you guys like this. Let me know if you like the slow-mo clips and what I was thinking uh, and or anything else I could add to this video to be more effective. Thanks so much for watching.